Golden Rule Radio is brought to you by McIlvaney ICA. ICA has been helping people take delivery of precious metals and find storage options for decades. They've also helped thousands of investors with their precious metals IRAs. Call ICA today for your free portfolio review at 800-525-9556 or download your free report online by clicking the link in the video description to learn how you can double your gold and silver ounces even within an IRA. Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, your weekly recap of the precious metals markets, the news that moves the markets, and the charts that trump all. And today I'm going to be stepping a little bit aside from my normal, let's look at the entire forest. And I do want to zoom in a little bit on the single tree that is the gold chart and just what we've seen gold here do over the last couple of weeks. Now, the reason I want to do this is because we are debating, are we seeing a continuation of the long-term bull market or not? And as many of you watching the gold charts know, since we hit the beginning of July, gold has come up about $60 from around 1760 all the way up to just shy of 1820 here a couple days ago, and now we're sitting around 1800. So I do want to zoom in a little bit. I know I generally like to talk about the long-term trend, medium-term trend, even short-term trend, but this is really just over the last couple of weeks. And the reason being is we had a double bottom with a subsequent lower low right there at the end of June. So we came into kind of a long-term 50% line around 1775, 1770. We pushed down a little bit lower to 1760. And then with this bullish RSI divergence, if you look at RSI on the chart here, we put in an oversold level back in the middle of June. And that second push down, we had a less oversold level. So when you have price declining, and RSI has hit bottom and started to increase, you tend to have a reversal against the trend, and that could be what we're seeing here. Now, the price came up into a floor that was put in back in the beginning of May, and we're using that as our new ceiling. So I often say old floors become new ceilings, old highs become new lows, vice versa, resistance becomes support, so on and so forth. Now, the reason I'm looking at the shorter-term chart is because we could be seeing a reversal here. Like I know, Tori, you would love to see. I would as well. Even though I always want to see lower prices because I'm not done buying gold yet. Obviously, the gold we have been accumulating and our clients have been accumulating for many decades. You do want to see that increase at least to keep pace with inflation. As Robert talked about a couple weeks ago, showing how gold is actually outperforming inflation on a long enough timeline. So we're at a very key break point here over the next couple weeks. Short term, we could see gold push up to around 1820. Now, for me, that would signal a very strong argument that we are looking at a breakout, just another 20, 30 bucks up from where we're at today, around 1800. Or we could see gold come back down to around 1770, but fail to go much lower than that and then put in a higher price. So we could start to see the stair step up move. So the question is, of course, for me, did we put in that ceiling that coincided with this floor back from the beginning of May, you can see on the chart here, or are we gonna blow right through the ceiling and keep going? Now, the other option, of course, this is your medium term, is we do continue down and we look at some of those lower pricing levels I pointed out last week, if that trend were to continue. So this is one of those potential breakpoints here for the next week or so. I think we may even get an answer as early as Monday or Tuesday before we even record next week. But keep a very close eye on the spot price of gold. Now, that's different than the coin price, different than the bar price. So we've been talking about those differences. Yeah, we'll get into that a little bit, too, because that's a key point. So what I hear you saying is 1760 to the downside, maybe 1770. That's got to hold into the upside 1820. It sure didn't like hitting 1820 yesterday. It didn't last, and we immediately saw about a $25 drop. So does that cause you any concern for the weakness of the 1820 mark or unrelated? No, immediate drops at price levels where you know there's going to be standing buy or standing sell orders, especially in the futures market. When you have those immediate intraday drops, no, those are irrelevant to me. It's more the continuation over the next couple days and what has gold done since that $25 drop? It's come back up. So it's very likely a lot of those standing orders did get filled the first time it hit. 
and a $25 drop off of a price level like that is pretty insignificant. Now, if it dropped 25 and then went down another 25 the next day, that'd be a different story. Okay. But it didn't. It turned around and it came back up. So if all those standing orders got filled a few days ago and it's on the way back up there, what's going to stop it from pushing through this time? Yeah, we did. We dropped 25. We're back up 10 today. And silver sort of followed suit. What we have seen is that gold-silver ratio on today's gold strength, this week's gold strength really in this reversal that you discuss has driven that gold to silver ratio up a bit to 69 to 1 today. We'll keep an eye on that as well if the gold prices are moving the way that you're predicting that they might. So following on the heels of our Basel III discussion last week and certainly the last year where we've been seeing this disconnect between spot gold and actual physical product, with the spot gold ratio up around 69, I think it's also important to point out that when you look at actual physical product like silver American eagles compared to bars or gold coins, that ratio is actually closer to 60, 59 to 61 right now. So you're looking at about a 10 point difference to your benefit as a silver owner by owning physical silver versus owning paper silver. Right. And if you're adding to ounces, you have to be cognizant of the fact that we do have inordinately high premiums in particular products. So when you call us, obviously, we're going to fully disclose and be transparent with what those premiums are. We're not responsible for them. It's just a wholesale exchange type of an event based on supply and demand. Silver American Eagle is at the all-time high that we've seen as a company this week. So to acquire a one-ounce Silver American Eagle, you're going to pay the most over spot that you've ever paid not in dollar figures, in percentages. So that's a real premium spike. Gold American Eagles are also incredibly high in terms of where they normally are. And you're paying 4 to 5% more for an American Eagle than you will with the next bullion gold coin. So those are premium realities that are in the market right now. And keep in mind, too, I'm encouraged by this gold move just from the spot price, going back to spot price. I'm encouraged by that because you've seen a continuation of the uptrend in the U.S. dollar index during the same time. So even though gold is up from last week's show, so is the dollar index at 92.7 from 92.35. So are you keeping eyes on the dollar right now, or are you merely putting a lot of emphasis on the physical gold charts? Yeah, I mean, I think the physical gold charts matter because it's the interesting story especially for the 30th time I've said it now, the Basel III changes. Looking at that differentiation between paper and physical, I think matters going forward. But ultimately, everything comes back to the dollar. I mean, the dollar is still the largest asset on the planet. It's the thing that most business is traded in. So you can't even begin to ignore the dollar. Now, like you said, the fact that gold has rebounded up over the last couple of weeks while the dollar has continued up, I think is incredibly strong sign for gold. We've talked about lumber, we've talked about steel, we're certainly talking about gas and oil prices. So you're seeing the dollar increasing, as Robert always likes to point out, so I'll do it for him because he couldn't make it here today. It's relative within the basket of other currencies, right. increasing compared mm -hmm. to the euro, compared to the British pound, the yuan, so on and so forth. So to see the dollar going up and commodities going up, which are priced in dollars, at least in terms of these indicators, that really offers a, let's call it double strength to the commodity increase. So yes, I'm definitely looking at the dollar. The dollar rebound, I believe, is about to turn down here at least over the next couple of weeks. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to continue the decline longer term drop in the dollar that began a couple years ago when we hit 104 and have declined since then. But the dollar pushing up above 92 is still sitting below all the previous highs. It's still yet to put in any type of significant higher high. I mean, you're talking about the dollar getting up to maybe 94 before you could argue that has it turned bullish? So once again, trends continue until proven otherwise, and the dollar hasn't proven anything except for just a short-term reversal up amidst a long-term decline. And even in this short-term return, you can see this declining trend line that the dollar index is now pushing up against, and surprise, surprise, it's pushing into it with bearish divergence on the other side. So to see the dollar hit this declining trend line and then turn back down 
wouldn't surprise me at all. Now we do have a higher low. You know, we had the beginning of 2021 bottom that we put in sub 90. We tried to push below it in May and weren't able to. So we technically have a higher low, but if we were to turn down here and get sub 90 again, now we're looking at some dollar charts that Robert and I talked about a couple months ago where we're looking at the dollar down in the low 80s, maybe even the 70s. And it's been a long time since that happened. And with the way gas prices are already moving, food expenses are already moving, you're looking at some pretty serious political, economic, and social ramifications if we see the dollar lose another 10 or 20%. Well, the way I look at it is this is an opportunity to sell your dollars. So when you have these short-term spikes and you see commodities, yes, we've seen a commodities rally lately, but timber's off 40% from its high. Like we've seen a rollover right. in the short term in a lot of those commodity prices with this dollar index spike. So sell your dollars. This is an opportunity to convert your dollars into a tangible commodity like metals where they're down in these prices. And you mentioned the inflation. I think each week for a while here we should – joke about this transitory nature of the inflation and just give a little update. You know, we went into a lot of details last week about rent and home prices and gas prices and all that. Well, we now see a record share of small business firms uh, reporting a hike in worker pay in June. They're getting desperate to hire people. So 39% of small businesses report giving raises. The average new car price has just topped 40000 for the first time, $40,000 to buy an average new car. Existing home prices, we talked about this last week, they're rising at a record pace of 24%. Rent is up 9.2% so far this year, the fastest increase on record. And yet, when they go to measure CPI, a third of the CPI is shelter. They're claiming that it's only up 2.2%. Now, that's a huge difference, 7% plus. Why would they do that? Same thing with owner's equivalent rent. So credit to this here with one of our listeners, Mark. Why would they be suppressing CPI? It's because of COLA, right? You've got cost of living adjustments for anyone on Social Security or any form of government income. They don't want to adjust income levels. If it's not transitory and they're lying about the CPI, then they better come to the table with a cost of living adjustment for everybody that's dependent upon government income. Same thing with interest rates. Our economy, our government cannot afford an interest rate spike, and it's going to indirectly happen if they start accurately measuring these inflation numbers. So each week we're going to just touch base a little bit, see what the fun inflationary numbers are that are tracking, and give you encouragement as to why you continue to hold and add to your physical precious metals. Yeah, I just had that exact conversation with a couple earlier today, clients who I've worked with for a number of years, as they're pushing into the age bracket where eventually you retire and you're in spending mode, not savings mode. And where does that income come from as subsidized beyond what you get from your social security check? That's right. And that's the COLA discussion. And I think, like you said, that's definitely going to become... First and foremost, in a lot of American household discussions going forward. Uh, second thing, it's interesting you bring up the cost of living as well, not just on the macro scale, like COLA adjustment, but on a person-to-person -person basis. As I'm walking around town, you talk about they're having to raise wages. But I walk around town, and most of the businesses amidst the height of our tourist season here in Colorado have signs out front, limited hours due to staffing problems. Now it's hiring. a national it's trend. Everywhere. It's everywhere, Miles. It's everywhere. And, and as long as somebody can make more on unemployment, that's not going to change. For the first time that I recall ever hearing, I heard a news release this morning talking about a huge spike in job offerings or job openings, that there are more than 9 million reported job openings in the economy, and they spun it in the mainstream media as a positive for the economy. But they failed to mention the fact that the unemployment rate actually increased. So we have far more job openings and we have unemployment increasing. That tells you that there's a demotivation in the working sector to actually take a job. Our local Burger King closed. When's the last time you heard of a fast food chain closing because they cannot get cooks, they cannot get help. So that's the reality of the situation right now. And until those underlying fundamentals change, the cost of living has to be adjusted. Wages have to meet. And that's what employers are going to have a hard time doing. That's going to be a future strain on the economy. That's going to be a major strain on your savings if you're sitting in cash. 
you have to be sitting in something that makes you immune to the currency fluctuations and you need to get out ahead of this job market and get competitive wages because your budget is thrown way off in this type of an economy. So before we head out this week, we do want to take a quick glance at some of the other charts here because I think it's going to continue the story of gold is up, the dollar's up. Well, guess what? Silver's up. It remains in its long-term trading wedge that's been trending up. Silver has yet to give any indication that it's in anything but a bull market. Platinum, while taking a dive like gold did earlier this year, has certainly seems to have found bottom around that 50% correction line, and it's gone up from about a thousand and a quarter and flirting with pushing back above 1100. And palladium is incredibly strong. Having pushed up and set a pretty significant higher high after taking a pretty massive drop back in June, we've already rebounded from that. Took a little bit of a fall back down last week, but has immediately come back up. And like we talked about with gold, wiping out those standing sell orders if you get back to that price again. The only thing that's going to stop it is anybody who's placed new orders in the last week. And orders that have piled up at a certain price over a period of a few weeks or months are always going to exceed the number of orders that have been added just in the last couple days. So I think palladium is going to continue pushing up. That's going to pull platinum up. I think gold is probably going to continue pushing up if it breaks above this declining ceiling that we looked at earlier. And what do you know? The Dow finally broke through a declining ceiling. Now it hasn't put in a higher high yet. It did top out at the previous high, but the Dow is broken above a rising ceiling. So what does the world look like? I, I asked this question a couple weeks ago, right? What does the world look like? What does the world look like when everything goes up? The Dow's up, commodities are up. Granted, like you said, some of the commodities took a massive rise and now they're having their one step backwards. You take two steps forward, Gold did it last year. Now we're taking one step backwards. Timber took two steps forward. Now we're taking one step backwards. Bitcoin, two steps forward, one step backwards. Now Bitcoin's a different story uh, since Elon Musk tends to be in charge of that entire market because whatever he says about Bitcoin causes Bitcoin to decide what to do. But the equities market, a couple big steps up, took a step backwards. The dollar taking a step up. So what does the world look like where everything's going up, including the thing that everything is related to? And I think it gets back to Robert's long-term argument of you can't look at the dollar in a vacuum. It's part of the basket. I like it. So let's have a step down in the dollar and two steps up in gold this week. I That'll think that's do it for... <laughs> not a bad argument. I think there that's very possible. Let's have it happen. So that's it for this week's Golden Rule Radio. Thanks for returning and listening once again. If you liked what you heard, you can click the subscribe button or ring the bell to get notifications each week of our show. You can also head over, if you have some questions, to our website at McIlvaney.com. You can find us on Twitter at ICA Gold or Facebook at McIlvaney Financial. And as always, if you'd like to discuss your personal portfolio with Tori, myself, or any of the advisors here at McIlvaney ICA, you can give us a call at 1-800-525-9556. Thanks for listening and have a great week. Thank you.